The New Orleans Pelicans took care of business against the Spurs and showed you the blueprint for success without Zion Williamson. But can they play like this to finish out the season? Plus, are we getting a Zion update today? It's Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans in NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. Here with y'all day after the Pelicans beat the San Antonio Spurs, 119-84, just crushed them to keep up with the Los Angeles Lakers in the Western Conference, a much-needed win for New Orleans. We'll break down what they did well in this one because they showed you the blueprint for success without Zion Williamson. And then the question becomes, can you do this consistently? Because the schedule is about to get really tough. Plus, Zion update. That's the structure for today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all breaking down this Pelicans team, the good, the bad, the wins, the losses. What's going to happen these final, what, 10 games now? 11 games, the remainder of the regular season. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Comment down below on YouTube if you want to support the channel. And today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by the Ultimate Basketball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an NBA GM and managing your basketball franchise? Then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebasketballgm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On all caps, in the game. Okay, Pelicans, doing what you need to do. This type of game, you needed to see from them. They had to show you that they were capable of this, to put that loss to the Houston Rockets on Friday in the rearview mirror. Simply put, the Pelicans took care of business. They beat the Spurs, and they did everything they needed to do, and it was beautiful. It was beautiful. They got Jonas Valanciunas going early. You'll hear me when I talk about FanDuel later. Bet on that. And you could have too. You knew they were going to try and go to Jonas Valanciunas early. Establish him early. Play a little bit more inside out than you have in the past. And it's going to open up spots for Brandon Ingram, for CJ McCollum to get where they want to go. To give Trey Murphy good looks from three. Every other time the Pelicans started going down throughout the game, they were getting to their spots and getting good looks and the type of looks that weren't forced that you want them to get. B.I. had a little bit more space. C.J. working off ball, as we've talked about, works much better in that kind of role. I was just on ESPN Radio talking about that yesterday. Had good, easy looks en route to an efficient game. Brandon Ingram in this one, 32 points on 16 shots. That's unbelievable efficiency. By pulling people out a little bit, He can shoot better. He also got to the line a freaking ton. You saw him get to the rim more often, but got to the line a ton because he had room to actually attack the basket and get fouls. Perfect 10 of 10 from the free throw line and seven assists on the night. Perfect. CJ McCollum, 15 points. Not the most efficient shooting night, but he was chipping in, rebounding with the team. Eight boards for him. Four assists, just one turnover, not killing the Pelicans. This team getting to their spots. They also had Trey Murphy launching threes, making three of them, 17 points for him. It's exactly the type of performance that you want. When the ball was going in, when they were scoring, they can get back, get set on defense. It allowed them to get stops and then get this, turn those stops into transition offense for themselves. They won the fast break battle in this game. They got some easy transition buckets by being able to get out and run. They forced turnovers, 14 for the Spurs, turned into 21 points for New Orleans. Defense to offense, and then offense to good defense. These two things always work hand in hand, as I've been talking about a lot this season. Bad offense leads to worse defense, whereas good defense leads to easier offense. And they put it together completely in this game. And that's why they ran away with the victory. This one was over by halftime. 
It was over by halftime. It was over by the end of the third. It was over basically from the jump. But you knew this San Antonio Spurs team wasn't going to give up necessarily. They have young guys that want to make a name for themselves in the league that are playing for more minutes next season. So you had to be ready for the energy that they were going to bring. And Willie Green in his pregame press conference had said he's been trying to instill a greater sense of urgency in the Pelicans. That you don't have very many games, you're falling behind in the standings, saying he was even showing the standings to the team, and he knows those guys look at that anyway, to create a better sense of urgency, and New Orleans came out with it. Herb Jones playing great defense on guys like Malachi Branham and others, needing to slow them down. Not let them get into easy rhythm threes and all of a sudden explode for points. Branham, 2 of 11. And that dude's game is just basically scoring the rock. Five points on the night. Those are the type of performances that you needed to see from this team. Getting it going early and keeping that energy level consistently throughout the game. And after a weekend where he played the starters heavy minutes because you got that easy victory, were able to cruise. You didn't have to play these guys much. Valanciunas didn't play 28 minutes in this one. Brandon Ingram didn't play 32. Trey didn't play 31. No one played more than 32 minutes in this game. That's what you needed to give your guys a rest for this stretch run because it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But they showed you what the blueprint is. Get the ball to JV. You don't have to play through him the entirety of the game. And this was one of those games where he has a very favorable matchup. 19 points on 8 of 10 shooting for 15 boards, also 5 assists. You're not going to be able to do that every night. But get him the ball early, try and get him going, try and kind of establish that deep post presence and open things up for the rest of the guys. This is what their offense needs to look like when it comes to not having Zion Williamson out there. This is the blueprint for success. You do that. Then all of a sudden now, you're getting some easy buckets, you're getting stops, and you're able to get out and play a little bit quicker, play with pace. And that's not just transition points, that's moving the ball around, cutting with purpose, and you saw a lot of that. 31 assists on the night for New Orleans on 45 makes. That's a good ratio to have right there. The cuts were well-timed. The off-ball movements and the actions, the pick and rolls, the screens and things like that, exactly what the Pelicans needed to be doing. It wasn't that stagnant dribble the air out of the ball for B.I. or C.J. and then just launch a tough mid-range shot. There was space for guys to actively drive to the rim, and it led to very good things for the Pelicans. This is the blueprint for what they need to try and do. But here's the thing. This was the Spurs. Spurs are terrible. You know half those guys that were playing for the Spurs? Maybe not. Can you do this against good teams? Because you're going to need to. The schedule gets really tough coming up, actually. Let's look at that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by the Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. I love this mobile game, the Ultimate Pro Basketball GM. It's actually keeping me up at night a little bit. Ever dreamed of becoming an NBA GM and managing your basketball franchise? Well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and assistants, trading and training players, making draft picks, and navigating your franchise through free agency and all the ups and downs of a season all this in a challenging and realistic game world ultimate pro basketball gm is completely free and playable offline which is the best part we're about to be on a plane gonna be playing it on there so play on the go as you want when you want to we're doing a big league with all of our hosts there's a lot of trash talk there i'm making the playoffs every year getting swept in the first round but i'm working on it. Maybe you can give me tips on how to get to the next round. So Locked On Pelicans listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, just visit probasketballgm.com, scan the code, or look it up on the app stores. That's probasketballgm.com. Ultimate Basketball GM, start your dynasty today. Thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We cover everything you want to know about this team. During the season, pushing towards the playoffs, telling you why tanking actually isn't something that's going to help New Orleans very much. Listen to that episode yesterday if you haven't already. And now we're going to look towards the future. But also for your second listen, don't forget to check out Locked On Saints. Host Ross Jackson breaking down everything black and gold. More free agent news for the Saints. How much cap room do they have? He's got everything covered. Locked On Saints. Make sure that's your second listen today. So we 
just looked at New Orleans and everything they did to beat the San Antonio Spurs. You saw the genesis of what they needed to do in that Friday. Very disappointing loss to the Houston Rockets before they took care of business against the Rockets on Sunday and kind of put it all together. And then they did it again right here against the San Antonio Spurs. Just doing everything they really needed to do. And I love to see that from this team. But now you need to do it consistently going forward. And consistency has been a big problem for the Pelicans. How many times have we said, play through Jonas a little bit more, add more off-ball movement. It's going to help your defense. It's going to help your offense. And that's going to fix the majority of the problems for the Pelicans. And how many times have they not done that? How many times do we need to say, you need to come out and not just look slow and play with no sense of urgency. And then they come out and they play with no sense of urgency and they look like they don't care. This team knows what to do. The blueprint, as we just talked about, is right there for when you don't have Zion Williamson. We'll talk a little bit more about him in the next segment. Jose Alvarado, too. You're going to need this consistency. I I did in the quick little video I do after games, which I'll I'll talk about that in a second here. You know, this season and the postseason is there for the taking. It's there for the taking. It's basically going to be between, I think, the Pelicans and the Lakers, more or less for that final play-in tournament spot in the West. I don't think Utah is going to start tanking. I don't think Oklahoma City is going to start tanking. And they're in a little bit better of a position than the Pelicans are. So Lakers and Pelicans, there's a lot to gain here by beating the Lakers, a lot to gain by getting into the postseason at the expense of the Lakers. And the Pelicans, for a little bit, have had the luxury of an easier strength of schedule. But after this game, that really has changed. These games coming up aren't actually easy anymore. So while they had one of the five easiest strengths of schedules remaining, that was as of a week ago. Today, now, after this win over the San Antonio Spurs, they have the seventh toughest The easiest games remaining are this game Thursday against Charlotte and then later on against the Portland Trailblazers. You finish this season with games against the Denver Nuggets, the Memphis Grizzlies, the Sacramento Kings, two against the Clippers, one against the Warriors, and one against the Minnesota Timberwolves who might be in the postseason at that point but maybe playing for seeding position. This is not going to be easy. So if New Orleans thinks they can just go 500 or so the rest of the way and get in, thinks they can kind of just sleepwalk their way through, that ain't going to happen, and you're going to be on the outside looking in. And as I said in the quick little video, you need to find this consistency to get into the postseason, or you're only going to have yourself to blame if you don't make it in. This is not going to be due to another team being better than you or anything like that. This is going to come down to the Pelicans doing exactly what they need to do. And here's the thing. They know what they need to do. We know what they need to do. If they don't do that, it's on them, right? That's on them. That's not on anyone else. That's on them failing to make the postseason and not taking care of business and doing what they need to do. And that is an organizational failure if that happens. I'm not going to mince words about it. I'm not going to. My knee is killing me. That's why I'm moving around so much here on the show, trying to get comfortable. Uh, That's why I'm being kind of blunt here. There's no excuse not to follow this blueprint and go forward, whether that's on the coaches, the players, or the front office in some capacity. You've seen it these past three games. This can work. Put it all together and go out and win. You beat some of those teams, you'll be in a real good spot. The Lakers have a pretty easy schedule remaining, somewhat. Easier than the Pelicans, though they have two games against the Suns, one against the Clippers, but you get two games against the Bulls, who are actually kind of streaking a little bit right now. You play OKC and the Jazz twice. Those, I don't think, are actually easy games, despite what strength the schedule stuff tells you. Those teams are under 500, but they're competing for a postseason spot, too, and they're not going to give up, and they're playing pretty good basketball right now. So when you look at this, it's not going to be easy for any of these teams, meaning the Lakers will give you a little bit of help. A little bit of help. Not a lot. Control your own destiny and go out and do what you need to do. You're capable of winning very many games and getting into the postseason and not having to stress about this and not be looking for help. I talked about it in yesterday's show a little bit. I actually talked about it on the radio with Gus Catton Gill too and others at the arena. 
This might come down to the final day of the regular season. That's how close this race is. It might come down to tiebreakers. We've seen New Orleans get in on tiebreakers. Remember that Anthony Davis last second miraculous three-pointer to win a game in February. It was actually on a Friday during Mardi Gras. I forget what year it was. But at the end of the season, they were tied with the Thunder, and they had the tiebreaker over the Thunder, so they got in, and the Thunder with Durant and Westbrook didn't. New Orleans doesn't really have the tiebreaker over any of these teams. So if they end up tied there, they're out. So don't end up tied with the same record. Win the games because there's enough talent here to not nearly be as bad as they've been so far this year. Just take care of business. Take care of business. If we see a game where they come out flat, if we see a game come out where there isn't off-ball movement, where they're not getting the ball to Jonas Valanciunas, and again, you can't do that with every game. you got to feed Jonas in certain matchups, but you still got to try and keep a defense honest a little bit. So I'm not saying that's the like solution to everything. So do what you can, win these games, and don't leave it up to tiebreakers and things like that because those aren't in the Pelicans' favor, especially with the Los Angeles Lakers. You want to get in, you want to get that pick swap with the Lakers so they get the worst pick, you get their pick, and everyone goes home happy no matter what New Orleans does in the postseason, win or lose. that You just want to be in there, and I think that's the biggest thing. Can they get Zion back to help them? Let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel. The tournament is heating up. We're into the Sweet 16, and now is the perfect time to download the FanDuel app, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to points scored, threes drained. You can also get in all the prop bets, like first scorer for the Pelicans, Jonas Valanciunas, plus 240. You knew they were going to try and feed him. You knew they were going to try and feed him. He ended up with the first basket for the Pelicans. That one cashed. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday for y'all talking all things Pelicans. Don't forget, we're going to be talking draft. We're going to be talking free agency as we get to the offseason too and what the Pelicans can do to kind of watch this disappointing season away and get back to kind of being a dark horse contender because it's something they're going to be able to do and I'm looking forward to all of the things that we're going to be able to talk about this off season. And now for your second listen, go check out game to game NBA. I do that quick little minute recap after every game. All of our hosts do that. It gets compiled into one show. So if you want just an easy recap around the NBA, great show to learn about the games that went down from the local angle that only locked on can deliver. It's on the locked on NBA feed. I'm on there today. Our locked on NBA national show. We're talking Damian Lillard, his legacy, the MVP award voting and this one maybe is relevant to the Pelicans. Jalen Brown, does he want out of Boston? Make sure you listen to that show as well for your second listen. Locked on NBA or game to game NBA. So let's wrap up today's show because this is something I've been asked about a lot. Zion update? We're probably due for one this week. We very well may get one today. By the time you listen, we may have gotten one already. It's about two weeks today from the last update we received. They practice on Wednesday, so they're speaking to the media. So I think that makes the most sense for them to deliver an update of sorts. I don't know what it's going to be. I have no idea if he's going to play or not the remainder of the regular season. I think the plan for him is to still play. They're going to be in contention until the very, very end. So if he can play and he wants to play, there's no reason not to play him, especially if it might help you win games. And I think they close out the regular season. It's the Knicks, Memphis, and then Minnesota. You kind of need him in some of those games, I think. It's, it's something like that in some order. So I think we'll get an update today. I hope it's good. You know, I still think there's a chance he doesn't play the remainder of the season. It, hamstrings are just difficult injuries you got to give him time and then there's a ramp up period needed you know he's going to need a couple of practices the practices that they have the remaining parts of the season there's not very many left they're practicing Wednesday they're not practicing Friday I don't think 
So we'll see. It's going to be close. You might get three games out of him, five games, six games out of him, if that's the case. But that means he's returning soon. And we should have a better update on that, hopefully today. But I would guess at some point this week, and hopefully it's only going to be positive. But we'll see. No idea just yet. I think we will get one on Jose Alvarado somewhat soon. He should be reevaluated this week or so. He seems closer. He's warming up. You see him doing some things out there on the court. So I think he's getting closer to being back too. Hopefully we get an up, a good update on him. So maybe a little bit of reinforcements arriving in Jose. And then hopefully Zion. But... Time's running out, but this team can still win games as we talked about in today's show, and there's no reason to tank as we talked about in yesterday's show. So there's a lot to play for, and it's going to be meaningful games down the stretch. Can't really ask for anything more than that other than maybe just already have, be a lock for the postseason and don't stress us out would be cool. But they still have a chance at the sixth seed in avoiding the play-in tournament. You're going to need to do that, you know, taking care of business against a subpar team like the Charlotte Hornets. So we'll more on that. Later in the week, we'll have more on what the Pelicans really need to kind of be looking for and what some of the goals, the remaining part of the regular season, and maybe an EJ Liddell update soon. We'll cover that all the remainder of the week here on Locked On Pelicans, and that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. Thank you all so much for listening. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. I'll be back with you all tomorrow.